Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Got a good one for you today, folks. We're going to take the Chef's Kitchen Helper and we're going to AI it. We're going to integrate it with ChatGPT OpenAI and we're going to use it to say, hey, this is the stuff I have in my kitchen pantry. All right, I got milk, I got marinara sauce, I got pepperoni, I got whatever. All right, here's my list of ingredients. You tell me what I can make with it. And we'll have ChatGPT do the hard work. Today's question comes from Nolan in Evanston, Illinois, one of my Platinum members. Nolan says, I've been using your Chef's Kitchen Helper database for over a year now and it works great. But I got to thinking that I could use ChatGPT to help me come up with some new recipe ideas based on what I have in my pantry. I can copy and paste my list of ingredients into the GPT interface, but is there a way I can just integrate this into my database directly. I know you showed us how to do some stuff with GPT before with Access. How would I put these two things together? Well, that's a great idea, Nolan. With the Chef's Kitchen Helper that I showed you how to build before, you've got a list of all the products that are in your pantry right now, all the different ingredients. We could literally take that, build a text string out of it, send that text string to OpenAI and say, with some instructions and say, hey, based on these ingredients, Give me three dishes or five dishes or whatever that I can make out of this stuff, right? And then there you go. And we'll have ChatGPT do all the hard work. So what do we need to know? Well, first off, this is going to be a developer level video, which means we're going to need a decent amount of VBA with this one. This is more of an advanced level VBA uh, video for you. And in fact, we're going to have to use record sets in today's video. Record sets allow us to say, okay, here are the records in my table. I want to loop through them and read in the data in the VB, right? And to create a text string that's got one or more records worth of data in it that I can then take that text string and do stuff with it, like send it to OpenAI. Okay, so definitely go watch my record sets video if you haven't worked with record sets before. This is pretty much the only way that I can think of to do this. And I love record sets. I use them all the time. So definitely a good tool to have in your box. If you haven't watched my Chef's Kitchen Helper video, this one's about four years old. This was a popular one back in the day. Uh, go watch this. In fact, this one came up even before I had my, my Tech Help Free template. So it's just a couple of tables and some queries. But basically in this database, I show you how to, to put in your list of ingredients. You specify the recipes, right? Like a pizza requires this much flour, this much marinara sauce, this much pepperoni, this much mozzarella trees, and then the database will tell you based on what the required quantities are and what you have on hand, what you can make. Okay, so go watch this just to get a feel for it. If you want to, this is kind of optional because we're going to just, all you need really is a product table. This is definitely the big one though. Definitely go watch the OpenAI video. There's two parts to it. I will teach you how to build a database where you can send information to OpenAI, get a response back, display that in your form. Uh, we're going to be working with a copy of this database for today. So if you haven't built this yet, go build it now. Go watch this video and follow along. Build it. If you're a gold member, you can download the database off my website. That's one of the benefits of being a member. And then once you've, done, once you've got that, then come on back. All right, I'm going to start with grabbing a copy of the Chef's Kitchen Helper database. Since I'm a gold member on my own website, I can do that. Here's the download right there. I'm going to click on that. It'll download the file. There it is right there. Let's open her up. And this database is pretty simple. We got a list of products, and this is really all we need for today, right? We got a product ID, which we don't, really don't care about. Product name, that's your products, your quantity on hand, and your unit type, ounces, cups, pounds, whatever, okay? That's all we need. The rest of the stuff in this database is if you want to, you know, put in your own recipes, right? Cereal, pancakes, chicken parm, and then you specify the ingredients required for each recipe. I covered this in that other video. All we really need for today is this because we're going to make ChatGPT tell us what to do. Now, you could do this yourself manually using the ChatGPT web interface if you want to. Let me show you an example. All right, here I am in chat GPT on the web. Uh, you can use GPT-3.5 GPT works just fine. Uh, I've tried it in both of them. GPT-4 is a little more advanced, of course. By the time you're watching this, it could be the year 2030, and we're up to GPT-85. I don't know. 
But anyways, we're just going to come down here, okay? We're going to type in a basic prompt. Like, I'm going to give you the contents of my food pantry. Please suggest three dishes that I can make using these ingredients. Now, don't hit enter yet. Hit shift enter a couple times so you're on a blank line. Go up to your product table. Select these columns like that. Copy it, control C. Come back over here and then paste that in. There's your stuff. And yeah, GPT can make sense out of that. And then send it. And then right away, there you go. There's three three dishes for you. Chicken parma spinach pasta. Yeah, I got that stuff. Chicken breast, flour, eggs, parmesan cheese. Spinach pancakes with eggs. Uh, I don't know if that, that, that sounds kind of okay, right? Creamy chicken Alfredo pasta. Sure. Sounds great. Okay. So what we want to do with today's lesson is we want to make access do this. So I can just from my database... You know, keep your product list up to date, update your pantry, whatever. And then when you're ready for some ideas for dinner, click the button and have it tell you, you know, some different ideas. Okay. So now the next step is to go get my open AI database. I believe it's on part two. Yeah. So usually you'll find links to multiple parts on here. There's part two. And usually the database is on the last part. This is a two part series. There's the database right there. I'm going to click on that bad boy, have that download. All right, we can open up the OpenAI database. All right, here we are. Now, this is the members version of it. So if you're not a member, there have been a, a few changes to this. Basically, what I did was uh, in, the, in the free version, we just had one command, which was please correct for spelling and grammar. Well, in the extended cut, we made it so you can have different bots. So you can pick, okay, reply as if you're Jean-Luc Picard. Right, and if I say, you know, please go to the store, and you can say, you know, please reply as if you're Jean-Luc Picard. It will come back with that answer. And of course, I'm getting error unauthorized because, and I was going to bring this up, but I, I jumped the gun. Uh, we have to go go into the secret key mod. And in here is where you have to put your API key. Remember, if you're going to do this, you need an API key from OpenAI. So you put that right in here. I'm going to put mine in now, and you're not going to know what it is because it's mine. And I don't want you running up my bill, but go ahead and put your API key in here now. And now that my API key is in there, it should come back. There we go. Make it so engage. Make your way to the store and proceed with your mission. So <laughs> that's what we did in the other one. Or you could say, you know, reply as Mr. Spock. Let's see what it comes back with. Oh, this is indeed fascinating. You're suggesting physical, a physical visit to acquire goods. <laughs> I love it. Anyways. Uh, so that's basically what we added in the extended cut. All right, so next up, let's take the product table from our chef database and bring that over here. Okay, that's all you got to do. Now we really don't need this other database anymore. We can close that and get it out of the way. All right, so we got our list of products from our pantry in our AI database. Now we're going to set up a bot for the instructions for the chef. So I'm going to go to the bot table. If you're, if you're building this off the free database, you're not going to use a bot. You're just going to replace the instructions, your system message, with this. Okay, we'll call this the chef's helper. And I'll put that same set of instructions in here that I gave to ChatGPT. Okay, now what we're essentially going to do is we're going to take this and send it as a system message. And then we're going to send our list of products as the user message okay all right now note that this members note that this is id 7 for our send to open ai function all right so instead of using this send to open ai which which uses these bots here okay what we're going to do is we're going to make another button in fact i'm going to get rid of these we don't need all these buttons and let's just rename this guy chef's helper in fact, what I'm going to do is we don't need, we can keep this stuff around. If you want to keep it around, just kind of bring it over here and make it smaller, right? We'll send to open AI. We'll put our little bot over here. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll just change, you know, change this to chef's helper, whatever you want to do, make it look pretty. I make it look pretty for this, for the slide, right? Chef's helper, whatever. Okay. But we want a nice big area over here so we can see what the response is. So we can see all the dishes. Okay. We'll do like that. Okay, now we're going to use a custom button to send this stuff 
All right, we're not going to use these. We'll keep these around in case you want to use them for something else. But this is the button that's going to be sending our stuff to OpenAI and getting the response. Let's rename the button. Uh, it's customer list button right now. Let's call this the chef button. And now we're going to take the code out of the send to OpenAI button. All right, so go in here, build event. All right, this is the code here for the members. Uh, the non-member version, all I did was I took that all that code in the button and I just encapsulated it into this function called Ask Open AI, all right, which sends to it the text, which is the user message, and the bot information, which is the instructions. All right, that's all that does. You should be able to figure out how to work with that. We're going to copy that stuff there. We're going to drop it in this button here, okay? Now our bot combo, we're not gonna use the bot combo, we're just gonna put in there our ID seven. We're gonna use the chef bot, okay? And the stuff we're gonna send to it is not going to be my text. My text is the text box. We don't wanna send that, we wanna send our product string. All right, what's the product string? Well, the product string is a string we're gonna build up from all of our products. All right, so we're gonna dim that as a string. Okay, so we're gonna build up a product string, which is a list of all the products out of the product T, which we'll use a record set for. Okay, and then we're gonna send that as the data with the instructions from the bot, bot seven, and that's gonna go to OpenAI and we'll get our reply back. And we're gonna build that product string in tomorrow's class. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Or if you remember, you can watch it now because I'm going to record it in just a few minutes. And in part two, we will continue on by building our string of products to send to OpenAI and make sure this whole thing works. All right. So that's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't wanna to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really wanna learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just 
a dollar. That's it. One dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.